guys, welcome to episode 42 of the D-Hard House podcast. My name is Alicia, and I'm coming to you from the always sunny West Texas. <laughs> today is Sunday, and I am coming to you today from the living room. Yes. Well, a corner in the living room, but yes. <laughs> The living room today instead of the craft room. This is a video podcast about all things crafty and I throw in little tidbits in there about running or cooking or random things that I also like to do. So welcome if you are a new viewer and welcome back if you're a returning viewer. Uh, while I'm thinking about viewers, if you regularly watch this podcast and you haven't subscribed yet, would you mind clicking that subscribe button? Because we're getting close to 100 subscribers. And once we get to 100 subscribers for the podcast on YouTube, I am going to have a giveaway. So no pressure, but if you already watch but you forgot to hit subscribe, which I do all the time with podcasts, um, just go ahead and click subscribe so we can get to 100 just a little bit faster. Um, yes, so I have my coffee and I am losing my train of th thought completely. I uh, just finished my run an hour ago, so I'm a little whew, all over the place. <laughs> anyway, so yes, I totally intended to record on Friday and I, I did record video but I ran out of room on my phone and then ran out of the opportunity to record video and just said whatever I'll start over and do it later in the weekend. So here it is on Sunday a couple days late and I apologize for that. But um, yeah so I thought today I would come to you from the living room. Uh, there's lots of light in at least this part of the living room because uh, this window right here is a south facing window and we get really good light all year round all day long from this window so uh, yes I do also like gardening so I have some indoor plants one of them you can see right here uh, and then I have some oregano basil and another random indoor plant <laughs> over here, um, which I'll show you another time. But those, the oregano and the basil I planted earlier this year, and they're not doing so hot because I've, I've been moving them from window to window trying to find the right lighting for them, and I just repotted them a couple weeks ago to give them more room so hopefully they'll start um, flourishing here in a little bit but uh, anyway what do I want to talk about first I totally didn't write notes <laughs> um, yeah so I'll go ahead and talk about the make-alongs that we currently have going on so if you haven't already joined the D Hard House podcast group on Ravelry, you should, because we do host knit-alongs, make-alongs, have giveaways, ask for te test knitters, talk about patterns and things, so, um, yes, so, <laughs> currently, we have, <laughs> Marjorie is so funny, she's, she's at my feet, Marjorie is our two-year-old black Labrador, and she's so adorable, anyway, um, Yes, so we have the Cozy Couch make-along and the Cozy Crib make-along, which are all about making blankets. So there's the adult size blanket, which is the Cozy Couch, and the baby blanket, which is the Cozy Crib. And they're make-alongs because you can use any craft to make a blanket. So for more information about those make-alongs, please see the group on Ravelry. So while we're talking about blankets, I do have the blanket that I'm currently working on, right here on the back of the chair and this is my buffalo check blanket it is getting rather large um i have 91 squares on here right now 
It is a mitered square blanket pattern. And um, I have a couple of these mitered square blankets going. I have this buffalo check one, and then I have another one that's just more like a random multicolor blanket. Um, and on the other one, I have all of the diagonals facing the same way. But when I started this blanket, I decided to switch it up a little bit and knit it from the center out. So I have a progress keeper on here to mark the center of the blanket, and it is my Texas progress keeper. Yep. So yes, we've got that nice X in the middle, and then as I add squares, I add them to the outside so that those diagonal ridges um, radiate out from the center of the blanket. And I really, really like this. And as you can see, it goes really well with my decor, so. <laughs> yes. I love Buffalo Check. It is my favorite pattern, like stripes, polka dots, nope, Buffalo Check all the way. I love it. Um, I am originally from Michigan, born and raised, went to college. Um, I didn't move out of Michigan until I went to grad school. And um, yes, I, I own plenty of Buffalo Check things and I just, I just love it. So <laughs> anyway, not that being a Michigander means you're Buffalo Check everything. I'm just saying that it's my jam, so. But yes, I have one lonely square here on this side of the blanket where I need to add nine more squares to get to 100. So when you're doing the mitered square blanket and you're doing this kind of thing where, let me just keep hitting myself in the face <laughs> with that square. So if you're gonna angle the, this diagonal so that it comes out from the center, then what you need to do is start from the center of the row. So you can see here, the next square I'm gonna add will be here. I have the diagonal going the other way, and then I'll keep adding squares out going to the edges. Um, but yes, I'm really enjoying this. Uh, I think what makes this blanket go a lot faster than the random color blanket is that I'm not spending time picking out the colors. So with the multicolor mitered square blanket, what I was doing was trying to, not trying to, I was laying out the colors for the entire row. That way I wouldn't repeat the same color within a row. And I would also try to balance out like not having too many dark colors side by side or too many light colors side by side, like trying to mix it up. And so it takes a, it would take me a bit of time to lay all of that out um, ahead of time. And then I'd also have to have a designated place in the craft room where I would lay out 20 skeins of yarn because I had it 20 squares wide, 20 skeins of yarn all in a row and never be able to move it out of the way because I was afraid I would lose the order. And so it just it just got to be kind of annoying. But I did get a couple more colors um, from the sale bin at the store of, of yarn to add to that blanket. So I might start working on it again. <laughs> but anyway, uh, but with this, with a pattern, um, a color block pattern like this, I don't have to guess which color am I using next because it just follows the pattern. So there's a lot less time that I spend in the planning stage and, and that means I can spend more time in actual knitting on the blanket. So anyway, I am at, like I said, 91 squares and I'm really excited uh, to get to 100. So 100 subscribers, 100 squares, let's do it. <laughs> All right, so yeah, this is one of two blankets that I'm working on, like I said, and uh, yeah, even at 90-ish squares, 
it's a, it's a pretty good lap blanket right now, so as I knit on it, it does serve as a blanket. So as it starts to cool down, I will want to work on this more because I want to put on a blanket anyway. And then I can just work on the blanket that's, that's sitting on my lap. So yeah, that's one of my works in progress. Uh, nowhere near being finished. I want this thing to be humongous. So I don't know if I'm going to finish this blanket this year. I did start it this year. Um, but it's fun and it looks good draped on the back of the chair. I'm going to take a drink of my coffee. Mm. I love coffee. Oh my gosh. Okay. So, um, yes. What else do I have going on? Uh, we were talking about make-alongs earlier. So I have a knit-along coming up. It hasn't started yet. This knit-along is called All the Shawls of Fall. And if you couldn't guess from the name, it's about knitting shawls in fall. So sorry, Marjorie hit the uh, leg of the table here. Um, yeah, so that will run September 22nd through December 21st. So for the calendar fall season. And um, basically knit any shawl out of any yarn any size and um, what you'll do is post a picture of your finished shawl in the finished objects thread in the group on Ravelry and that will get you uh, an entry into a drawing for a prize at the end of the knit along. So um, for each shawl that you finish during those dates you get one entry into the drawing and the winner for the prize will be chosen at random. Uh, what can get you bonus entries is if you knit one of my shawl patterns. So currently I have two shawl patterns out there. I have a third one coming. It's not completely ready yet. Uh, but right now I have uh, Daydreamer available and I can't remember if it's still on discount, but for the first month of a pattern being released, I put it on discount. So. I'll have to double check those dates of of when that discount ends or if it already ended. I can't remember. The second pattern I have out uh, is called Serendipity and that pattern I actually have for free. Um, so if you knit either of those patterns or the third one that's coming out soon, okay, um, that will get you two entries uh, into the drawing. So what you'll do is you'll take a picture of your finished object and then you'll just post it twice to get you two entries. So yes, that's, that is coming up. Um, there will be a prize or prizes. I haven't quite decided yet. Uh, and I will announce that at the start of the knit along, which is coming up soon. And I'm really excited. <laughs> All right. So, um, like I said, it's, that knit along is all about finishing your shawls. So in case you didn't catch on that real subtle thing, you can start your shawl early if you want and then just finish it between September 22nd and December 21st. And it would totally be fine. I also encourage you to double dip into other uh, knit alongs and um, yeah, just knit what you want and enter it in for prizes and if you win awesome and if not you knit something and you have a finished object and that's really cool all right so that's all i have for announcements and things so i have no finished objects to show you i do have two more works in progress to show you and one of them is really close to being finished I'm super excited. So what I want to talk about next is the sweater that I'm knitting for my dad. I am knitting the Ranger by Jared Flood, which is a men's cardigan. And uh, it has this really neat texture pattern to it. So it was 
very interesting to knit, but also kind of annoying because <laughs> there was a pattern to it. But anyway, uh, last time I showed it to you, I had the body and the sleeves completely finished. And all I needed to do was add the collar and the, the button band. So I have added the collar and one side of the button band. I still need to get the other side. So what I did was I ordered the buttons online. I actually ordered them on Amazon and uh, waited for those to come in the mail. Turns out they were not Prime eligible. Bummer. So I did have to wait, but that's okay. So in the meantime, I said, you know what? Why don't I go ahead and knit the collar? So I did. There it is. And then that only took me a couple of hours. So I was like, well, heck, I'll go ahead and knit the side of the button band where the buttons will get attached. The other side has the button holes. Oh my gosh. Now I'm like, did I put the buttons on the correct side for a man's shirt? Oh my gosh. <sighs> did I do that? I think I did. I think I'm going to have to look that up now. I'm going to have to look at one of Michael's shirts. Okay, if I messed it up, then I will, I will rip it out and I will fix it. I'm pretty sure I have it right. Because I'm pretty sure the pattern says right side do this, left side do that. It's not until I'm on camera when I think about, oh crap, did I do that wrong? Anyway, I did decide where the buttons will get attached but not the button holes. So I still need to knit um, this side with the button holes. And before I do that, I'll make sure I have these on the correct side. Uh, but anyway, I did get the buttons in the mail. So what I'm going to do is um, pin them on to the, the band over here so that when I'm knitting this side, I can line them up to where the button holes are going to be. And then... Uh, after all that, I'll sew the buttons on for sure in those spots. Just making sure that they line up properly. And then the thing will be finished. Because I did this in a couple hours. I did this part in maybe an hour. And then I was like, well, crap, I'll just go ahead and weave in the ends. So I wove in all the ends that were here. Um, I do have needles on here because... I don't know if I showed you this before, but when we were attaching the, the sleeves and the body, the armpit, this is, this is the underarm here that I'm showing you, the underarm was, was left wide open. Okay, this was knit, I knit the sleeves first, I, I just followed the pattern. The pattern said to knit the sleeves first, then knit the body bottom up, then attach the sleeves and knit the yoke. So when you attach the sleeves and then knit the yoke, it left the underarm unfinished, which was fine, okay? It just, and the pattern tells you later to close it up. So I did close up one of the underarms and, and wove in the ends, and then this needle, this knitting needle is on here because it's holding the stitches um, for this underarm, and so I just need to close this up, weave in these ends, and uh, do the button thing, and then, and then it'll be finished. So I am very, very excited. Um, Dad did try it on. He was very happy with it. The color looks really nice on him. Um, let's see, if I stand up, are you going to even be able to see? Yeah, kind of. Like I said, it's for my father, so it's, he's a, he's a bigger guy than me, so it is a good size. There's the bottom. Anyway, oh, this is so much knitting. 
and I'm very excited to to finish this up and and gift this to him before it actually gets cold outside. Yeah, there's the oh, that looks so nice. Those decreases there. Oh. Anyway, he is going to look super snazzy in this thing. And the buttons I got, I don't know where I put them, but I'll put it in a picture here or something. Um, the buttons I got to go with this are a nice dark wood with some nice texture detail on them as well, which will complement his sweater very nicely. So, And I like the buttons so much that I bought a few extras so that I could use them on my cardigan because they'll also go really well with my cardigan. So that is my second whip that I want to talk about is the cardigan I'm knitting for myself. And I am making Polly by Isabel Kramer, which is a free pattern on Ravelry. So I can talk about it all I want. <laughs> it is a free pattern on Ravelry, which is awesome. So for my cardigan, I'm using two colors. The main color is um, Cloudborn. Now. We'll play with the camera again, just to see. It's not going to refocus, is it? No, but that's okay. Cloudborn, this is from Craftsy. This is Merino Superwash Sock Twist, and the color is Shayla Heather. That's the main color. The, the stripes on the cardigan are a nice cream color, and that is Holiday Yarns. And this is vanilla, which makes sense. Uh, yes. So, <laughs> I have made some really good progress. In fact, um, this is what I have left of my first ball of main color. <laughs> so I, um, I caked up a second ball. I haven't started it yet. And yeah. Oh my gosh, you guys. This is so cool. All right, so this is knit top down, which I prefer because you can try it on as you go. And I did actually try it on and it fits really well. Of course, I have all of these ends from these stripes, which is gonna be a real pain, but whatever. Uh, because the body is in um, stockinette, this edge does curl. So when I was trying it on, I was a little scared that it wasn't going to actually close. But then, you know, I uncurled both sides of it, and it's going to fit just fine. So, um, yeah, it's garter stitch on the yoke in the main color. And then it's stockinette and stripes for the body. So let me see if I can... I'm just perching this on, on the front of me. But you can see that it is a cardigan. It is knit flat. And uh, you've got all these stripes going down the body. And I do have it on my Chow Gu needles. These are US size 4. Which the pattern calls for 2.5. Yeah. Anyway... <laughs> I did gauge swatch. That's why I am using size fours. I also do not actually own size two and a half needles. Um, so I didn't even start with that. But I did knit a swatch, okay, with the yarn and the needles that I'm just gonna use for the pattern. And I got super close to gauge. Like I was only one stitch off. So it's going to be fine. Anyway, last time I showed this to you, this is the back of the cardigan. I have a progress keeper to show you where I was last time. I was right there. I had just finished the first stripe. Mm -hmm. And now I'm way down here. <laughs> oh. Okay, I gotta count them. I keep counting them and then forgetting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
I have nine stripes on here. Nine. Woo! I'm so excited. And there's a tiny bit of waist shaping, so I am working on that. Um, it's very... Now, I've... Have I done waist shaping before? Did the Harvest Cardigan have waist shaping? Because I knit that before. But that was last year, and I, I totally can't remember. Anyway, um... The waist shaping is not drastic, in my opinion, um, so it's it's good. I like it. I also like that I can't really see it. So, but that's what the uh, stitch markers are for: is to help you know where to do the uh, the waist shaping. So, anyway, I am chugging along. So. Um, I have been referring to the other projects of people knitting this, you know, on Ravelry when you look up a pattern, you can also look at uh, projects completed or being worked on by other people. And thank you so much to everyone who posts a picture of themselves or the recipient wearing the garment because it is so important to see how it's going to look on your body <laughs> and I really appreciate everyone posting pictures of a human wearing the garment. Um, I know we're not all comfortable putting ourselves out there on the internet um, and some of those pictures did have people you know just just the neck you know just showing just the torso torso and not actually their face so um, even if you're not comfortable with putting yourself completely out there, um, at least showing how it fits on the body. I, I really appreciate that. And I'm trying to get better about doing that myself. It's so hard for me to get hair in my chapstick, sorry. <laughs> uh, it is difficult to get a picture of yourself wearing your garment. And um, I just wanted to, to say thank you to everyone who does that. And uh, it really helps the rest of us decide whether or not we want to knit that pattern and um, it really helped me a lot because seeing the cardigan sitting on a table you know with some flowers and a cup of coffee like it looks really pretty and I want to knit it but if I get through knitting the whole thing and then I try it on and I hate the way it fits I'm not gonna be too happy so anyway all of that to say <laughs> I was going to the to look at the various projects for this cardigan. And I was counting the stripes of how far did everyone else knit this? Because in the pattern, she says, knit until an inch and a half shorter than desired length because you're gonna then put an inch and a half of garter or ribbing or whatever down at the bottom, okay? And so I was like, well, I wonder how far everyone else knit this and I know I'm pretty close to gauge I'm only like one stitch and one row off so I'm pretty darn close and uh, most of the pattern most of the patterns most of the projects have 12 stripes 12 14 somewhere around there and I have nine. Oh my gosh I have nine, so I'm really close to finishing the body, like three or so more stripes. I will try it on to make sure that it is the length that I want. Not that I know what length I want. I'll probably try on, um, I'll probably put on some of the cardigans that I already own, like store-bought cardigans and just kind of mark off where they hit me on my hip and then probably shoot for something similar with this one so yeah i'm i'm very excited um very very excited to to work on this i still need to do the sleeves the collar the buttons you know so i still have a lot more knitting to do but i am loving it so much so yeah garment garment knitting. Um, this pattern is very easy to follow. I'm knitting the medium size and it's uh, 
it's working out really well. So if you're a beginner garment knitter, um, so far I would recommend this pattern because the increases are very simple increases. It's garter and stockinette. And yeah, it's so far it's it's cake. I'm just following the pattern exactly. I'm not changing anything. So uh, at this point, I haven't finished it yet. At this point, I would recommend it to a beginner. Okay. I have chapped lips like you wouldn't believe. Well, no, they're not that bad, but anyway, I'm putting on the chapstick a lot this weekend. Okay. So, um, oh yes, shop update. Let's talk about shop update next. So I have a shop, you guys, on Etsy. It's called D-Hard House Creations. I sell handmade bags and hand-dyed yarn. Oh my gosh, are you kidding? All right. It fell on the floor. Okay, so um, I do have a new bag to put in the shop um, with some new fabric. Uh, and I think I'll have a couple of these. Yeah, I just brought one to show you since they're the same fabric. So first of all, notice my decor. Okay. Now look at this bag. Yeah. You can see why I bought this fabric, right? <laughs> so there's a uh, mountain, uh, adventure, there's a snail, which is so cute, a bear. I love bears. Oh my god, anything with a black bear on it, I'll take it. Um, a bear, a fish. Uh, oh yes, there's a teepee. Anyway, so Michael and I love to go camping and we bought a new tent. Was it last year we bought a new tent? I think so. Yeah, it was yeah, it was last year because our other one ended up having a hole in it and we totally got soaked when it rained. So we went out and bought a new tent and it's actually a teepee. I love it so much. Anyway, so I love the teepee on there. Uh, but yes, it's just black and white um, with all the fun things on it. And okay, I'm really curious because the text is backwards as I'm seeing it on the camera and I'm wondering if I'm going to have to fix that when I edit the podcast. But anyway, and then the inside is, oh, <laughs> yeah, uh, basically like picnic table, tablecloth, like classic, mm-hmm, yeah, so, oh, I love this so much. So this is in the short size, it's got the sewn-in handle and my tag on it, D Hard House Creations. And uh, it is a box bottom bag. It does have interfacing, so it will stand up on its own, no problem, right? And it is the short, the short size. Oh my gosh. This size is the same as this size. This is currently what I'm housing my cardigan in. Yeah, and it fits. It fits. My cardigan and two balls of yarn so far fit in this bag, which is insane. That's the short size. Anyway, this will be going up in the shop and hopefully it will already be in there by the time I post this podcast. Yes. So, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? This is so freaking cute. And yes, I will be keeping the, one of these for myself. <laughs> so cute. Um, yeah, so that's what I have in the shop. I won't be posting, I don't foresee myself posting a lot of bags all at once in the near future because school has started back up again. And uh, for those of you who don't know, I, I do teach at a college and that is my full-time job, like literally my full-time job. So uh, I, I sell bags and dye yarn when I have free time, which happens, it's just, I can't, reliably commit to making tons of bags a week so 
it'll be, you know, one here, one there kind of thing during the school year. Anyway, <laughs> that's that. So, um, I think that's all I have for crafting content for this time. Um, yes. So at this point, I'll move into talking about other things that I'm interested, like running and reading and things like that. And so if you were only here for the knitting and crafting content, then I will see you next time. And if you want to stick around and hear what's going on with me, here we go. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. I know what to say for the transition, and then I don't know what to say first for that segment. <laughs> so uh, I think I mentioned earlier, I don't know, because this is like take five, um, <laughs> that I went running this morning. So I do like to run for my workouts. I also do some like following along with workout videos to try to mix things up a little bit. Uh, but the majority of my working out is running. Uh, so yes, today is Sunday. So basically we'll just do the week and I had to write it down on a little post-it here because <laughs> I'm using my phone for recording. So uh, yeah, this week I have ran a total of 4.09 miles. So basically four and a tenth of a mile, which is pretty good. Um, I, I have learned, and I think I've said this before through experience that um, I can't just ramp everything up immediately. I have to s slowly ease into things like I'm an adult now and I'm not a, a young person and I have to be aware of that and make good decisions. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, thankfully I have not had any serious injuries. I've never broken a bone. I I haven't ever torn my ACL or anything as serious as that. Um, the, the worst sort of injury I've had was, um, was it last year or was it earlier this? I think it was earlier this year. Um, my hip was out of alignment and it was pinching on a nerve and so when I'd go running it would just pound 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 on that nerve and it would hurt like crazy um, not only during the run but later in the day when I'd be standing up in front of class lecturing and I would just feel the need to sit down um, which isn't always possible when you're lecturing in front of a class. So um, I did see a chiropractor, I got some adjustments, um, but he mostly recommended that I don't just do running, that I need to mix it up. I need to throw in yoga, weightlifting, swimming, biking, like you can't just do one type of workout. I mean, you can, but you set yourself up for injuries like this, where you're putting too much stress on the same part of your body every time and it just wears it out. So anyway, thankfully, uh, that is, that is the worst of it. So when I talk about, you know, trying to prevent injuries and stuff, it's not like I've, I've ever had a serious injury. Thank goodness. Um, and those of you who have had to overcome injuries like that, good for you because, um, yeah, my, my mom just had, uh, knee surgery and, you know, after a surgery like that, you have to go through physical therapy to, um, you know, recover from, from that surgery and build up your muscle strength and stuff. Um, and it's, 
it's a lot and you have to deal with a lot of physical pain, emotional stress, and just all the things. So any of you who have had to recover from a serious injury, I, I definitely don't mean to belittle any of that. That is, I, I understand and respect that that's, that's a lot to go through. And thankfully, I, I haven't had to do it myself. And I hope I never have to, but um, that's a part of listening to your body, learning from your mistakes and, and other people's mistakes um, or accidents. Um, sometimes it's just, it wasn't anything you did wrong. It was just an accident. So anyway, um, yeah, so I have learned how to uh, listen to advice and things. So the chiropractor suggested that I... I Mix up my workouts and don't just do running, so that is what I'm doing. Uh, because of that, I don't get in as as many miles in a week because um, it's not like I'm going to run and then go work out later in the day because um, I don't have that much free time. <laughs> I mean, I do, but some of that free time needs to be spent doing, you know, housework, extra extra office hours because several students have questions. Um, you know, it's not always up to me. <laughs> so, um, I have to be flexible. Anyway, um, yeah, so I do mix it up with, with, like I said, workout videos where I, you know, lift weights, do push-ups, that kind of thing. Um, I also do enjoy yoga, so I try to mix that in there as well. And, uh, you know, Chores are a workout, right? <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so I got in four miles, which is really good. I think last week I got in three. Three-ish. So, it's good improvement. Uh, I am not enjoying running in the dark. It Number one, it scares me because... I do wear contacts. So... It's not like I have perfect vision. <laughs> uh, we do have street lights, but they're not as frequent as I would like. Um, I think it's completely sufficient and um, for street lights. It's just for running at six in the morning, it's not like every inch of the sidewalk is covered in light. That's all I'm saying, is that if it were up to me, I would have more street lights so that when we go running at 6 in the morning, every inch of the sidewalk is covered in light. But that's not necessary for a street to have that many street lights. So while I complain, I'm happy we have street lights and I'm happy with the number that we have. Um, that being said, I'm not the only one who runs at six in the morning and I know this because I almost ran into other people and those other people are children young adults um, running for the local um, high school middle school I can't tell ages by looking at faces anymore <laughs> so I can't tell if they're middle school or high school or both but these these kids also run at 6, 6.30 in the morning before the sun is up. And um, they're in dark clothing. I mean, I'm wearing a workout shirt that's black. And um, I know one of their school colors is black. So I understand them wearing it. It's just the street is lit with lights, but it's not completely lit with lights. So when they're going out running in completely dark clothing, when it's dark out... And in those spots between the street lights, you can't even see them. And I'm saying that from experience because I was also running on the sidewalk. We were running opposite directions. And, you know, I'm mostly watching the ground because it's dark outside and I don't want to trip on anything. And so I'm looking at the ground most of the time. And then I look up every once in a while to make sure that nothing's in front of me. And then all of a sudden there's this, you know... 13 year old running right at me <laughs> it's like whoa I didn't even see you 
So, um, I'm not enjoying running in the dark because things pop out. I also saw this critter that I, I could not tell if it was a cat or a raccoon. It ran away from me, not toward me. I'm thankful for that. But I could not tell if it was a cat or a raccoon. The thing had a big bushy tail. But because it was running and it was dark, I just, I couldn't make out the difference. If it was a raccoon, it was kind of a small raccoon. And if it was a cat, it was kind of a big cat. But beyond that, I, I couldn't tell you which one it was. <laughs> but I, like I said, I was just happy it was running away from me and not toward me because I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> Raccoons are cute, but I hear in person they're pretty, uh, they're ferocious little critters, and I want to think of raccoons as cute little fluffy things, not claws with, you know, vicious intent, so. Anyway, so that's my deal. I'm not liking running at night, <laughs> night, I mean, six in the morning, uh, but that's when I can fit it in before work. And that's when it's actually cool enough outside that I'm not, you know, overheating. So, yeah. But we know that as, as, as the days go by, right, we get less and less sunlight. So sunrise is going to be later and later and later. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure at some point I'll either have to switch to running on the treadmill in the morning or running outside in the afternoon instead of the morning because of two reasons number one the darkness and number two the temperature um at six in the morning it's like 70 degrees fahrenheit which is crazy if you think about it being dark all night long no sun it's the time for everything to cool down and it only gets to like 70 that's crazy um, but as the nights get longer, it will cool down. And then once it gets cold enough with my asthma, I'm going to have to either run during the warm part of the day <laughs> or just run inside where it's more temperature controlled. So anyway, apparently I can talk about this for a really long time if I want to. So, yeah, that's what's going on with running and working out. Um, I will say, because I feel like others are in the same boat, and it comforts me to know that I'm not alone. That despite, despite working out, running, and eating healthy, the number on the scale isn't moving. Which, if you've experienced this, you know it is crazy frustrating. And it makes me want to just give up because it's clearly not making a difference. I put in all this extra effort and it's not even making a difference because that number isn't even moving. And that's annoying. I looked at some pictures, someone posted some pictures, she's a trainer can't remember her name but I think I saw it on Instagram she's a, a personal trainer and she asked permission of these ladies she was coaching and or training of uh, progress pictures you know take a picture day one take a picture after a month and notice the progress and it didn't show their faces or anything it was mostly just their torso and their arms um, that it was it was a slight difference like a month later you know or three months later or whatever it was that but you could tell in the pictures that they were making improvements you know her arms are a little smaller and her her abs are more toned and things like that but you don't notice it from day to day to day that you're making those changes and they had the same thing these women she you know was posting this this thing about specifically this issue where you work out for a period of time, you keep checking your your weight for progress, and there's no progress to be shown, that the number doesn't move and how discouraging that is. But just because that number isn't moving doesn't mean you aren't making progress. Um, and so I have noticed when I look in the mirror that 
I do look different, that I am making physical improvements that you can see, but don't show on the scale. I also feel a lot better. I feel like I can do more than when I don't work out. So I just have to readjust the way I define success to just ignore the scale um, and focus more on my, which seems silly, focus more on my appearance <laughs> and, uh, and how I feel and, and recognize that I am making improvements there. And I'm also getting healthy, which is not something you can always see or measure. Um, you know, how healthy your arteries are or your organs or whatever. And I know I'm making improvements there, but I don't know if I'll ever see that. So I just have to keep that in mind. And I wanted to share that with you guys that this is something I struggle with all the time. Excuse me. I, I teach math. I'm a numbers person. I use, I use data all of the time and um, weight is an easy number to obtain. You just step on a scale and there it is. It's an easy way to track progress with working out. People post pictures all the time of losing 40 pounds, 50 pounds, whatever. And to see that every time I step on that scale, it's the same freaking number every time. It just makes me want to punch a hole in a wall and and give up working out and i just wanted to share that with you guys that that i have that struggle i i deal with that struggle every day and i just have to remind myself that i'm in it for the long haul i'm in it for the extra extra years on my life i'm in it for the healthy life where i'm not having to deal with as many health problems. I'm sure I'll have health problems, but hopefully not as many as if, you know, as, as if, as if, as when. I totally lost track of that sentence. Um, okay, let me start over. <laughs> I will probably still have health problems, just not as many as if I weren't working out. That sentence just doesn't sound right to me. And, but I think you understand what I'm trying to say. Um, so I just have, I, I go through this cycle either every day or every other day where I'm, I have to remind myself that it's not about the number on the scale. It's not about the size jeans that I put on. And it's about how I feel, how healthy I am that I can actually go out and do things that I want to do and that improves the quality of my life, not the not what it says on the tag on the inside of my jeans that no one will ever see. So, I put it out there. <laughs> and if, if you ex experience the same struggle, I hope that this helps you and if you don't, if you actually notice the number move on the scale, like, that is awesome and I'm, I'm jealous but uh, <laughs> I'm sure I'll see that number move at some point it's just it's not moving it hasn't moved in quite a while and it frustrates the heck out of me and I yeah so anyway that's that and I haven't been reading anything except um, yeah, I haven't been reading anything except math textbooks, pretty much, and, uh, definitely not going to talk about that here with you guys. I think it would drive viewers away more than bring them in. Um, <laughs> I can joke about my subject. I'm comfortable enough with it. Uh, but, yeah, so not much reading right now. I'm hoping to get back into that with fall coming up and nestling up with a cup of hot cocoa or hot tea and, and curling up with a blanket and a good book. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited for fall. Um, I'll be showing you guys I'm slowly getting out the fall decorations around the house. Um, 
you know how it is with going shopping for seasonal things like that all the fall stuff is in the store now and if you don't get it now it'll be gone by the time fall is here so uh, I have totally been going out and buying you know pumpkins and stuff to put around uh, for decoration but not actually putting them out yet because I feel like it's too early and by the time October gets here I'll be sick of seeing pumpkins <laughs> so, uh, but yeah I'm, I'm excited for fall I'm excited for the knit along coming up I'm excited for the cooler weather so I can wear all the knitted things and and yeah so um that's all I have for you guys for this episode and um just remind you guys go ahead and click subscribe if you haven't already no pressure you don't have to but uh like I said once we get to 100 subscribers I'm going to have a giveaway of sorts and I'm excited about it so um yeah that's all I have for you and I hope to see you next week bye